Is this thing on? Buenos dias, buenas tardes, y buenas noches. Bon dia, boa tarde, y boa noite. So, you are looking for the best way in order to change your B visa, your tourist and or business visa, into your E2 investor visa. And that's exactly what I'm sharing with you guys today. My name is attorney Mari Ribeiro, and I'm an immigration expert helping professionals and entrepreneurs live their green card life and start their US business. So I'm so glad that you guys are here today. So let's talk about how you can change your tourist visa to an E2 investor visa. And not only just any way, but the best way. Stay with me. Okay, so before we get into today's topic, which is the best way for you to change your B status into an E2 visa for investors, if you are an investor, if you are a professional, if you are an entrepreneur, you need to download my free green card checklist specifically for entrepreneurs and for professionals. It maps out all the little things that you need to do, little things, major things, big things that can help you get your green card through your business, through your profession, through your entrepreneurship. I'm leaving it below, make sure you guys download that. All right, let's get started. First of all, the E2 visa is not available for everybody. Let me just tell you that right now, not everybody qualifies for the E2. And I don't mean just not qualifies because they don't meet certain requirements. I mean, because their country is not allowed in the E2 visa treaty country list. So the first thing you want to do is verify, double check, triple check, make double sure that your country is actually one of the treaty countries specifically for the E2 visas. I'm leaving the link below so that you can see a list of all the visas, all the countries that allow for this visa. Last time I looked at it, it was just this morning. Belgium is on there. Colombia is on there. Mexico is on there. Argentina is on there. There's lots of countries that are on there. So double check and make sure that the country in which you have your citizenship is also a part of that E2 visa treaty country. Once you've actually verified that your country does qualify for the E2 visa, because not everybody qualifies for it, um, you want to make the change to the E2 visa before your B visa actually expires. So you want to make sure that you're actually changing that visa before your B visa expires. When do you need to actually do that? Not just like the week or two before your visa expires. You want to do it at least three months before your B visa expires so that you can change it with time to your E2 visa as an investor. It's been my experience that it's better to do things right than to do things quick, fast, and in a hurry, okay? So make sure that you're giving at least three months in order to make that switch from a B visa tourist or business visitor to the E visa and for investors. Next, where is it that you can actually make that change? So you essentially have two options. You can either do it when you're here inside the United States and do a change of status, or you can do consular processing. So you would actually submit the petition in your home country at the US consulate. So let's talk about both of them. The first one is going to be if you're doing it here. Here's my problem with doing it here. You can do it. Yes, you absolutely can. However, when you change your visa inside the United States, you're not actually getting the E2 visa. You're just getting the E2 status. What the difference is, is that you're not actually getting a different visa in your passport. You just get the status, meaning my legal status is now changing from a B visa to an E2 visa investor, but you don't necessarily get the visa. You only get the status. I know it's a little bit complicated. Just trust me on this one. When you do it inside the United States, after that status expires, you're going to have to do the process anyway in your home country. So my recommendation is usually just do it in your home country. You're going to have to do it eventually. So you might as well. You can do the consular processing, which is going in your home country in the US consulate and submitting your petition. Here's why I usually suggest going that way. It's usually faster. It's usually um, an easier way for you to actually get the visa and not just get the status. Okay. What else does that do? Does that also implicate? Well, if you have your B1, B2 tourist visa and you're doing the consular processing, meaning you're not, you're not changing your status here in the United States, but you're going through your home country, your B1, B2 is still fine. You can still come in and out as long as your visa is still valid. And as long as you, you know, are maintaining legal status here, you can come in and out, it's not going to affect your B1, B2 visa in most cases. So if you have the opportunity and you can do it through consular processing, that's usually the route that I would suggest. 
that's pretty much simple, right? You know, which one, which one is the one that you're going to be able to do it? Um, let me know what you think about today's video and leave your comments below. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. That's the only way that I'm actually going to know that you find value in these types of videos. Also, if you have any questions or if you have suggestions on maybe what you want me to talk about, definitely leave those in the comments below. And for my fellow professionals and entrepreneurs, don't forget to get download your free green card checklist to get living your green card life. All right, I'll see you on the next one.